It's time for high school baseball on the NCW Life Channel. Today's broadcast is brought to you by the Wenatchee Valley YMCA. And now it's time to go to the diamond on the NCW Life Channel. Good afternoon, baseball fans. Welcome to Recreation Park. Boy, spring has sprung in a big way. Perfectly timed for Apple Blossom Festival getting underway this week. Also getting underway this week, some crucial baseball between the Wenatchee Panthers and the Moses Lake Chiefs. Both teams come into today's game at 10-2, and two, tied for first place in the Big Nine. So the tilt is going to start to rock one way or another here today in seven innings of baseball. It's going to be a great one. First of three for the week between the Chiefs and the Panthers. Coming up next, we'll talk to Coach Jeff Zender. We'll get you ready for the first pitch with the lineups. It's all coming your way here from Recreation Park on a Sun Splash Tuesday afternoon. It's Big Nine Baseball coming your way next on the NCW Live Channel. Back once again here to Recreation Park. Time to talk with Coach Jeff Zender, head coach here at Wenatchee High School. And our coach's interview brought to you by Heritage Memorial Chapel, a locally owned business with a heritage owned by a friend we trust. Well, Coach, it's a gorgeous day here. I wish we could play two today. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great baseball weather. Wind's nice and light, keeping the, keeping the heat down, and uh, we're looking forward to some good baseball today. Well, it's uh, getting to be that time of the year. I mean, downhill stretches here. You got a bunch of young kids, five sophomores in the lineup for you today, but they're playing some great baseball. Yeah, they're doing a very good job. They're uh, they're making good contact at the plate, making the plays that they need to be making, and uh, they're showing a lot of confidence for us. So it's been fun to watch them mature. Well, how fun is this? First of three games this week in a battle for first place in the Big Nine, just where you want to be, right? Oh, you got to love playing baseball in this kind of situation. You know, when it's on the line, it's uh, the adrenaline's so much higher. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, you guys have a rivalry already no matter what the sport is let's talk about this matchup here today and what you expect out of Moses Lake you got a chance to scout them a little bit earlier at Eastmont a, a game where they've got a guy on the mound today that jacked a big home run for them sounds like he's kind of their big guy yeah you know they have some good players you know they've uh, they played a lot of baseball together we know that um, they they're a lot like us with uh, running small balls in uh, different situational baseball so um, hopefully these boys are coached up and we can compete with with them. Let's talk about Byers on the mound for you today. We saw him in relief here when we did a broadcast earlier this season. How's he coming along for you and giving him the ball today? That's a lot of confidence. Yeah, you know, I told Kyle last night, I said, I have all the confidence in the world in you. You know, he's been every outing he's had, he's thrown a lot of strikes and he's kept hitters off balance. He's got our best, the best hitters in the league out and um, we're expecting another good outing from him today and, and we got Rubash and Blakeney in reserve if we need it, but uh, we're looking for another strong performance. Kyle. I know you don't put more emphasis on a particular game, but how important is it to get this one at home when you know you got two later on this week at their place? Yeah, you know, we, we try to focus on just playing the game, controlling what we can control, and just playing the game well, and hopefully the outcome falls. You know, obviously it's good to win in front of the hometown crowd, and, and you know, it's easier to win at home, they would say, but uh, um, we just want to play the baseball, or play the game like we can play it. Well, best of luck here today. Keep everybody healthy. Have some fun, too. Yeah, we look forward to it. Thank you, guys. You Jeff Zender joining us here on the pregame show. We'll come back with a starting lineup and first pitch from Rec Park. It's Moses Lake and Wenatchee on the way next on the NCW Life Channel. back once again to Recreation Park. Thanks again to Coach Jeff Zender for joining us. Let's take a look at his lineup here for this afternoon's matchup between the Panthers and the Moses Lake Chiefs starting in center field and batting first to be T.J. Shirting. Batting second, shortstop Dalton Thomas. Batting third, catcher Ronan Haynes. Batting fourth, the D.H. Colton Dial. Batting fifth, the first base, Seth Storley. Batting sixth is third baseman Thomas Blakeney. Batting seventh and right field, Chandler Holliday. Batting eighth, Nolan Dory, left fielder. And batting ninth, the second baseman, Jared Rubash. Meanwhile, on the mound for Wenatchee this afternoon, Kyle Byers, the senior with a 1-0 record and a 2.194 earned run average. The lineup for the Chiefs and uh, their head coach, Donnie Lindgren, getting the leadoff spot is second baseman Nick Valdez. Valdez will be followed by Dax Lindgren and 
and Dominic Signorelli as we're ready to go. And the first pitch is on the way, and it's a little outside and low for ball one. 1-0 one the count to Nick Valdez. As we mentioned, second batter is first baseman Dax Lindgren. This pitch swung on and hit on a hop right to the second baseman. Jared Rubash will field and throw to Seth Storley at first in time for the out. 4-3 on the putouts. One out here for the Chiefs in their part of the first. Batting third, third baseman Dominic Signorelli. Batting fourth, the catcher is Cody Goodwin. Batting fifth, center fielder Evan McLean. Batting sixth, the DH is Austin Valdez. Batting seventh, right fielder Josh Williams. Batting eighth, shortstop Cody Alvarado. This first pitch is a strike on the outside corner call to Dax Lindgren. And batting ninth for Coach Donnie Lindgren is Gabe Passy, the left fielder. Here comes the 0-1 pitch from Byers. Swung on and chopped foul into the Moses Lake dugout. To the count quickly 0-2 on Dax Lindgren. So the senior Kyle Byers getting the start here this afternoon for Wenatchee. In the first of three games, these two teams will play in the battle for first place in the Big Nine. This pitch swung on and a well-hit ball to deep right field. That's going to get past everybody and in the gap. Rounding first, heading for second with a stand-up double will be Dax Lindgren. No chance for T.J. Shirting in center or Chandler Holiday in right to track that one down. And the big spacious confines here at Recreation Park. So one aboard and one down brings up the third baseman, Dominic Signorelli. Signorelli, a junior in the lineup here for Coach Lindgren here this afternoon with a runner in scoring position here. Top of the first, just underway. Thanks for joining us on the NCW Life Channel. This curveball called strike on the outside corner to Signorelli. Paul Weddle calling balls and strikes behind home plate. Mark Colander out there between the mound and second is our base umpire here this afternoon. Myers is ready. Checks the runner a couple of times out at second. And the 0-1 pitch swung on. And this is going to be lifted into center field for a base hit. Let's see if it'll score a run. Lindgren will send the runner. And the throw will be cut off. And a run scoring RBI single. Dominic Signorelli drives Dax Lindgren in from second base. And the Chiefs stake a lead here in the top of the first inning. 1-0. Signorelli with a line drive base hit to right center field. So one in, one on, one down, and that brings up catcher Cody Goodwin. The pitch swung on, and this is also going to be singled in the left field this time. Signorelli will hold at second base as he rounds, is coming up with a ball in left field, Nolan Dory. So three hits already here for the Chiefs with runners at first and second, and that'll bring up center fielder Evan McLean. Well, the staff for Coach Jeff Zender, pretty darn good on the season as a staff. Wenatchee's ERA at 2.6. But Moses Lake brought the hitting shoes so far here today with three base hits, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back base hits. A run is in, two are on for Evan McLean. Center fielder in the right-hander batter's box and the first pitch to him, curveball strike called inside corner. 0-1 oh, the count to Evan McLean. Third baseman Thomas Blakeney in even with the bag at third here with a runner over at second base. And the 0-1 pitch is low for a ball and the count even at one ball and one strike. 350 down the lines here at Rec Park, 385 in center, but a lot of room here in the outfield, as we've seen already. The 1-1 one, one pitch to McLean, swung on a chop towards the shortstop, double play chance to two for one, to one for two, and that'll do it. Just what the doctor ordered for Kyle Byers, a 6-4-3 double play, but Moses Lake does get a run on two hits. Nobody left, three hits that is, will head to the bottom of the first, Moses Lake won. The Panthers are due up. You're watching Wenatchee Baseball this afternoon on the NCW Life Channel. Chiefs are ahead in this one, one nothing as we head to the bottom of the first inning. Due up for the Panthers, T.J. Shirting, Dalton Thomas, and Ronan Haynes. For 
Coach Jeff Zender and company here at Recreation Park as a helicopter flies over above towards the hospital. That's never a good sign as they have uh, their life flight landing on the roof of Central Washington Hospital at Confluence Medical Center. T.J. Shirting will start things off here for the Panthers who find themselves in a 1-0 hole. Shirting center fielder, one of five sophomores in the lineup for Coach Zender. Talk to him before the ball game about this young club, and he says, hey, we're learning as we go. Shirting batting 400 on the season, and Vance Alvarado's first pitch cued off the end of the bat right at Dax Lindgren at first. He'll take it to the bag himself. Three unassisted for the putouts, and one out here in the bottom of the first brings up shortstop Dalton Thomas. Appreciate you joining us here on the NCW Life Channel. Our broadcast brought to you by Wenatchee Valley YMCA for youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. It's the Wenatchee Valley YMCA. Dalton Thomas stepping in the right-handed batter's box. The junior shortstop for Wenatchee takes the first pitch for a strike on the outside corner. 0-1 oh, to Dalton Thomas. Thomas batting 250 on the season for Wenatchee and 44 plate appearances. This pitch swung on and fouled away down the first baseline, and the count goes to 0-2 on Do Thomas. 11 hits, 10 of those singles, one double for Thomas. He's driven in nine runs on the season. Here comes the 0-2 pitch to Thomas. Swung on and hit hard, but on a hop right there with the Ole move to Axel Ingren at first. And he's been a busy guy here in the bottom half of this first inning. Two unassisted putouts at first for Lindgren. That'll bring up the catcher, Ronan Haynes. The junior for the Panthers, Ronan Haynes, batting 485 on the season. He's got five doubles and three home runs with nine runs driven in. The first pitch he takes for a strike. And uh, Vance Alvarado dealing here in this bottom of the first. The 0-1 pitch to Ronan Haynes is a little bit outside with a fastball. He evens the count at one ball and one strike. Our broadcast also brought to you by Heritage Memorial Chapel, a funeral home with a heritage owned by a trusted friend. This pitch is taken for a strike and the count quickly in the pitcher's favor. Vance Alvarado, one and two. Uh, Ronan Haynes with two on or two outs, and nobody on here in the bottom of the first. With Anchi trailing it, one nothing. The one-two pitch, catcher sets up high and outside, and that's exactly where the pitch goes, missing. Count evens to Haynes at two balls and two strikes. Pretty good crowd here assembled this afternoon for the first of three games between the Chiefs and Panthers this week. This pitch swung on a chop back over the mound towards the second baseman. Easy play for Zach Valdez. And it is a one-two-three story for Wenatchee in the bottom of the first. To the second we go. Moses Lake one, Wenatchee nothing. You're watching Panther Baseball on the NCW Life Channel. And we'll be back after this 60 second timeout. finishes up his warm-up tosses. Ronan Haynes with the throw down to second base as the infield gathers around the mound here as we head to the top of the second. Austin Valdez, Josh Williams, and Cody Alvarado do up here for the Chiefs as they lead a 1-0. Over the Wenatchee Panthers. Myers looks in as Valdez steps in the right-handed batter's box, and the first pitch to him bounces in and away from Ronan Haynes. 1-0 oh, the count to Austin Valdez. For Byers this season, we mentioned his record 1-0. Oh. He does have uh, one save on the season. It's either kind of been a, a case of strikeout or walk for Byers on the mound this season. He's got 18 strikeouts coming into the game today, uh, but also he has 13 walks. And a timeout going to be called here by the home plate umpire, Paul Weddle. As Byers was taking a long time to get the signs from Ronan Haynes. Steps back in, does Valdez, and the 1-0 pitch, curveball is a strike. <laughs> Our broadcast today also brought to you by Confluence Health, Wenatchee's premier treatment center for all sports-related injuries. The 1-1 one, one pitch misses inside, and the count goes to 2-1 on Austin Valdez. The DH here this afternoon for 
This first game of three for the week. Here comes the 2-1 delivery from Byers. It misses. Oh, my. I thought that was ball outside, but strike call, and the count evens to Valdez. At two balls and two strikes, I was walking past the dugout, getting ready for the broadcast, coming up here to the booth, and was hailed down by one of the Wenatchee assistant coaches. Here comes the 2-2 pitch on the way by Byers. Misses way outside for a ball. 3-2. Gary Llewellyn, assistant for Wenatchee, if you remember, is the first coach for the Wenatchee Apple Sox baseball team. Gary is now an assistant, longtime assistant with Coach Zender here. This pitch swung on and popped up. Foul territory. Could be a play for the first baseman. Sliding, not able to make the play. But a nice try by Seth Storley. So the count will remain full to Austin Valdez at 3-2. But Gary came over to me and he says, hey, he says, I got to talk to you. And I thought, oh, you look kind of serious. And so I went over to him and he says, I hear there could be a brawl today. So we're going to need your help. <laughs> Now that goes back to a long time ago, first season for the Apple Sox when I was their play-by-play -play man. Swing and a miss here by Valdez. And gone on the strikeouts is the first man of the order here in the second for Kyle Byers, racking up his 19th strikeout of the season. That'll bring up right fielder Josh Williams. So back in the first season for the Wenatchee Apple Sox in the Pacific International League, they had a series up in Quitlam. This pitch swung on and hopped. Thomas Blakeney cuffed him, but he picks it up and throws, and it's in time. Close play at first, but Thomas Blakeney, good job staying with it on a hard hit ball that cuffed him. But he's able to make the throw over and the out. 5 3 on the put out. So two up, two down here in the second brings up shortstop Cody Alvarado. But in the latter innings of the first game of a doubleheader at Mundy Park in Coquitlam on the outskirts of Vancouver, this pitch swung on. Line drive goes off the glove of Byers. It's going to trickle out behind the mound and hard luck single off of Kyle Byers, both literally and figuratively by Cody Alvarado. Good instincts to throw that glove up. Save his face, but the ball just climbed out of the webbing. Trickled back behind the mound. Thomas Blakeney came over to field it, but couldn't get to it in time to get the speedy Alvarado over at first base. So a base hit with two outs. Runner aboard brings up left fielder Gabe Passy. So latter stages of that game in Coquitlam, two teams had uh, an issue, and the assistant coach, this pitch swung on and missed. The ball goes all the way to the backstop. That allows Alvarado to get down to second base, and we'll say that's a wild pitch, allowing him to get down there. And the count 0-1 on Gabe Passy. <laughs> Bud Adams, assistant coach and pitching coach for Gary Llewellyn back then, had issue with one of the Coquitlam coaches, I believe, or a player could have been, <laughs> if memory serves me right. So anyway, there's a bases clearing melee that occurs. This pitch is taken for a strike and a count of 1-2 on Passy. And I am, my broadcast position, literally on a picnic table that's cut in half, leaning up behind home plate on the chain link fence. And of course, I quickly grabbed for the microphones to turn down my field mic so I didn't pick up some <clears throat> language uh, that was happening out on the field. Byers turns and looks at the bag at second, and scrambling back there is Alvarado. So I'm sure that uh, Coach Llewellyn, referring to that interesting situation, Situation way back in 2000. This pitch swung on and hit down the third baseline. That's a foul ball, just foul. Thomas Blakeney fielded the ball, but where his glove was when I was on the outside of the line down to third beyond the third base bag. And the home plate umpire, Paul Weddle, says foul ball, so it remains 0-2 on Gabe Passy. <laughs> Some fun times doing the Apple Sox broadcast, that's for sure. 0-2 oh, the count to Passy, number nine man in the order for Moses Lake. And the pitch is swung on and missed. 
in the dirt outside, so the catcher, Ronan Haynes, will pop up and throw down to first. K-2-3 on the putout. And no harm done here in the second with a base hit to man left aboard for Moses Lake. We'll head to the bottom of the second inning. Chiefs won, Panthers nothing. You're watching Wenatchee Baseball on the NCW Life Channel. We'll be back right after this. will lead things off here in the bottom of the second. He'll be followed by Seth Storley and Thomas Blakeney as the Chiefs lead at 1-0 here in the bottom of the second. This pitch goes behind the batter. Curveball that didn't. 1-0 the counts on Colton Dial leading it off here in the second for Wenatchee. Panthers retired in order in their half of the first. This pitch misses away for ball two. 2-0 two the count on Colton Dial. Colton batting 412 on the season for Wenatchee. 13 singles, a double, nine runs batted in. This pitch swung on a chop towards the shortstop. In on the ball is Alvarado. The throw to first base is high, but he got the tag on the runner. Nice play over there by Dax Lindgren on a high throw to him. Is able to get his feet situated under him and then reached out with the ball in the gloved hand and tagged Colton Dial before he could touch first base. So an awkward looking 6-3 put out. One out here in the second brings up first baseman Seth Storley. The wind and delivery by Alvarado. Toronto is a curve in for a strike and they oh and one the count on Seth Storley. Storley batting 346 coming into this one with uh, three doubles on the season. This pitch swung on a grounded backhanding the ball is Valdez and he'll scoop it off of the artificial turf here and throw over in plenty of time to Dax Lindgren at first for the second out here in the second inning. So making quick work of the Panthers so far, Vance Alvarado for Moses Lake and with five in a row retired to start the ball game brings up third baseman Thomas Blakeney. Blakeney batting 308 on the season. Watches that first curveball miss inside as he ducked away from it. Want to know the count on Thomas. Back in and ready, and Alvarado's 1-0 pitch swung on and chopped towards the backhand of the shortstop, Cody Alvarado. His throw is high, but he got the foot down, according to the base umpire over there. That's Lindgren, and that'll do it. So Anchi, six up, six down to start this ball game against Vance Alvarado. will head to the third inning. It is a 1-0 Moses Lake lead. You're watching Panther Baseball today on the NCW Life Channel. with a curveball to start the top of the third to Nick Valdez. Misses outside for ball one. 1-0 one the count. Valdez 0 for 1 on the ball game. Grounded out to second back to start things off in the first. This is the Chiefs lead at 1-0. Myers' next pitch is swung on a miss and the count evens to Valdez at one ball and one strike. Mariners had an afternoon game today. Let's see if we can get a score for you on that. As we're one nothing here, a swing and a miss behind that fastball was Valdez in the count. One and two on the leadoff man here in the third. The number one man in the order for Donnie Lindgren and the Moses Lake Chiefs. We've got a timeout taken by the home plate umpire as Valdez steps out as Byers was looking in, shaking off two or three from Ronan Haynes, who checks over to the dugout to get the instructions on this pitch. And the pitch is swung on and fouled off behind home plate, so the count remains at one and two. If we can check a score for you on the Mariners before we're done with this inning. See how adept I am here with the <laughs> fingers as I'm trying to pay attention to too many things at once. One and two, the count to the pitch by Byers swung on and hit foul on the third base side, and the count stays at a ball and two strikes. Well, the Mariners won today. <laughs> One nothing over the Chicago White Sox on a five hitter. Valdez ready and a long look in by Byers and the one two pitch misses outside for ball two, two and two the count. Yeah. 
So the Mariners even the series with Chicago at a game in peace after the win today, 1-0. This pitch swung on and grounded slowly towards third. Long throw across, but Thomas Blakeney with the cannon over there. For the putout, 5-3 on the putout of Vic, Nick Valdez. And they'll bring up the first baseman, Dax Lindgren. Lindgren with a hard-hit double in the gap between Shirting and Holiday in center and right in his first plate appearance. And he'll step in here with his team up 1-0. And he scoring the only run in this game. The pitch taken across the plate, but a little bit low for a ball. 1-0 and oh, the count on Dax Lindgren. So both teams tied for first in the Big Nine standings coming into this one today at 10-2. and two. This pitch swung on a miss. The count evens to Lindgren at one ball and one strike. Chiefs are 12-2 and two on the season as they won both of their non-league games. When Wenatchee lost both of its non-league games, so they're 10-4 and four overall. The 1-1 pitch swung on and fouled back and out of play on the third base side. And the count to ball and two strikes here on Lindgren. Of course, it was an 0-2 count to him when he served one into deep right center field here at Rec Park back of the first. Myers ready and the 1-2 pitch. Curveball missing high for ball two. Two and two the counts on Dax Lindgren. Dominic Signorelli waiting on deck here for Moses Lake. As the Chiefs and Panthers do battle for the top spot in the Big Nine. Well, the first of three games played this week. This pitch swung on and on a hop right to first baseman Seth Storley. So he'll take it to the bag himself. Two down here in the third, and that'll bring up Dominic Signorelli. Signorelli with an RBI single in his first plate appearance. So he's one for one, but the bases are empty right now as he steps up here in the third. Pretty quick moving ball game so far as we're in the top of the third inning and a one nothing Moses Lake lead. The pitch to the plate, curveball missing outside for ball one. One and oh the count. Coming up later on this week, we've got uh, hockey on Thursday. It's more of the Fred Page Cup. Game four between Wenatchee and Prince George. That game was played up in Prince George early last week. We'll have that for you Thursday night at 7 o'clock here on the NCW Life Channel. A 1-0 pitch swung on and foul to the plate. Evens the count to Signorelli at a ball and a strike. Coming up on Friday, we changed things up. We originally had scheduled Eastmont baseball against Sunnyside. <laughs> But instead, we've switched it to soccer on Friday, and we'll bring you Davis and Wenatchee soccer in a very crucial match in the Big Nine standings, especially for the Panthers. This pitch high and inside for a ball. The count goes to two and one on Signorelli. After Eastmont knocked off the Panthers last week, four to two. Panthers, in fact, playing tonight at Rec Park. For, excuse me, at the Apple Bowl, right across from us here at Recreation Park. This pitch swung on and fouled away and out of play on the third base side. Evens the count to Signorelli at two balls and two strikes. Flyers trying to get out of the third here with no damage after giving up a run in the first. That's where we sit still. This pitch swung on and hit hard into the gap. That's going to drop in for a base hit in front of T.J. Shirting out there in left center. So Signorelli is two for two in the game with a couple of base hits to the outfield. That'll bring up the catcher, Cody Goodwin. with a hard hit single on the first pitch thrown to him back in the first as Moses Lake scored its run hitting back to back to back hits in that first frame. Two outs here in the third with a runner aboard as Goodwin steps in. A little breeze blowing in from left field here this afternoon. Gorgeous day for baseball. Pitch to the plate, misses outside, but a good pitch out throw basically. And as the throw down to first base is not in time by Ronan Haynes, 1 0 the count on Cody Goodwin. Good choice by Haynes there on a pitch low and away. His body and glove and ball were already going that way, so why not toss down to first base? This pitch in the dirt, stopped by Haynes, the throw down to second base, not in time. So down to second on a wild pitch goes Signorelli. And the count now 2-0 to Cody Goodwin. Just a few high.
high, thin, cirrus clouds mixed with our baby blue skies here on this late April afternoon at Recreation Park. Good one ready, checks the runner at second. The 2-0 pitch to the plate bounces in again, and the count goes to 3-0. So Byers retired the first two batters on ground balls in this inning, gave up a single, and now has gone 3-0 to Goodwin. And that will elicit a visit to the mound from Gary Llewellyn, joined out there by Ronan Haynes. So taking a look at the rest of our broadcast schedule this week, as I mentioned, Wenatchee Boys Soccer coming up on Friday against Davis from the Apple Bowl at 7 o'clock. Then on Saturday, of course, Apple Blossom Week is underway. We've got the Kai's Fiber Youth Parade Saturday morning and 11 live here on the NCW Life Channel. So join myself and Julie Agens Kuntz for the broadcast here on the NCW Life Channel. Where has the spring gone? But it is here and Apple Blossom Week upon us. Food fair gets underway Thursday at Memorial Park. The setup also well underway. And the pitch to the plate here bounces in again. That's a ball four. Meanwhile, heading down to third on the wild pitch is Signorelli. So the first walk of the game given up here by Kyle Byers puts runners on the corners for center fielder Evan McLean. So now Byers is in a sticky situation trying to hold on to a one nothing deficit right here, but Moses Lake threatening in the top half of the third inning. Evan McLean hit into an inning-ending double play back in the first. Myers would love to get a ground ball from him right here. The pitch swung on. How about popped up to the infield? The second baseman, Jared Rubash, over, but it'll be the first baseman, Seth Storley, who makes the catch for the out. And that'll do it. So it's a little sketchy situation here in the third, but Moses Lake leaves a couple of board on a base hit. We'll head to the bottom of the third, one nothing. Chiefs lead it. You're watching Panther Baseball on the NCW Life Channel. We'll be back right after this 60-second timeout. the third we go. Wodanchi trailing at one nothing in bottom third of the order due up here. Chandler Holiday, Nolan Dory, and Jared Rubash. Wodanchi looking for his first hit of the ball game. It's first base runner of the ball game against Vance Alvarado. He's retired six straight in the first two innings. And here we go to the third. And the first pitch swung on and lifted in the air to right field. Long run for the right fielder, but back on it is Josh Williams, and he will make the catch for the outs. So one out here in the third, and that'll bring up the left fielder, Nolan Dory. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, that's right. So a well-struck ball by Holiday, but Josh Williams, a lot of room out there to track it down to right field. So one, uh, one out, and the first pitch to Dory is swung on and missed. Pitch was low and in the dirt. 0-1 the count to Nolan. This pitch swung on and fouled back. So quickly ahead in the count is Vance Alvarado, who's retired, uh, well, everybody until Holiday via the ground ball. Holiday with the first fly out of the ball game. 0-2 count to Dory here. Crowding from the right-handed batter's box. And Alvarado's pitch to him, swung on and missed. Eight in a row retired by Alvarado. That'll bring up second baseman Jared Rubash. Rubash batting 306 coming into this ball game with eight ribbies on the season. He's got three doubles of his 11 hits. And the pitch to him is taken on an outside corner for a strike. Oh, and one the count 
to Jared Rubash, number nine man in the order here for Wenatchee. Two down in the bottom of the third. And the 0-1 pitch by Alvarado swung on, lifted down the left field line. It's going to drop down for a base hit. So Wenatchee has its first hit of the ball game and its first base run of the ball game on a bloop single down the left field line by Rubash. And with two outs, so that'll bring up center fielder T.J. Shirting. T.J. Shirty. you got to get him on to get him in. What actually finally does so here in the bottom of the third. Shirting 0 for 1. Squared to bunt. Fouled it off. And dead ball called by the home plate umpire, Paul Weddle. 0 and 1 that counts on T.J. Shirting, who hit one back to the pitcher back in the first. So he's 0 for 1 at the plate today. Pretty good lead over there by Rubash at first. In fact, that draws the attention of Alvarado as he'll toss over to Dax Lindgren, not in time. Shirting back in, the pitch to him is missing outside. Thought they might check with a base umpire on that check swing. They did not. So the count even to Shirting at one ball and one strike. Just stay for baseball. Temperatures in the low 70s, sunshine. This pitch swung on and fouled back into the screen. The count to ball and two strikes. Says it's 74 here in the booth. I'm in the shade, of course. I think a little bit warmer than that out there on the field of play. As that helicopter, Lifeline helicopter, takes off from the roof of Confluence Health, one of our sponsors here on the broadcast. This pitch swung on and fouled away into the screen on the first base side and flashing the handwork is Donnie Lindgren. Comes up with that one on the carom. One and two the counts here on TJ Shirting. Tossed to the bag at first again, thinking maybe that Rubash was going to be leaning over there. No lean as he gets back in time. One hit for Wenatchee in the game so far. The runner goes, the pitch swung on and fouled out of play on the first base side. So the count stays and a ball and two strikes. That's right. Broadcast brought to you in part by Confluence Health, Wenatchee's premier treatment center for all sports-related injuries and the Wenatchee Valley YMCA for youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. That's the Wenatchee Valley YMCA. One-two pitch again swung on and again fouled down the right field line and out of play. So Shirting staying alive here, except no, they're going to say no pitch and a bot call. So that puts a runner in scoring position as Rubash goes down to second. Now Moses Lake in the game we broadcast earlier this year against Eastmont did have some problems on the mound with the Bach situation. Now a Bach called here and a runner in scoring position. The one-two pitch is high and inside for ball two. So Vance Alvarado for the first time with a runner in scoring position against him. The 2-2 pitch misses. Oh, oh my. Thought it was outside. Strike three called and gone looking is TJ Shirting for the third out here in the third. So the Panthers leave a big one aboard. We'll head to the fourth inning of play. Chiefs won. Panthers nothing. You're watching Wenatchee Baseball today on the NCW Life Channel. to the fourth inning of play and it looks like we've got a new pitcher on the mound for the Wenatchee Panthers. Taking over will be Jared Rubash on the mound now. So we'll have to see if they change out pitcher for second baseman here for the Wenatchee Panthers. I don't think that fires out there at second base now. So we'll have to check and see who our new second baseman is for Wenatchee. Looks like number eight. So Dalton Thomas, who was at short. You know, he stays at short. Okay, so 18 is now at second base. Yes. And the 18 I have here on the roster would be a Dylan Norton Toft. Number five, Jared Rubat. So Jared Rubash, we know, is the new pitcher here for the
the Wenatchee Panthers. In a one nothing ball game, and Austin Valdez starts it off here in the fourth. And the first pitch is low and inside for a ball. One and oh the count. On Valdez, who struck out back in the second. So a short day of three innings worth of work here for Byers. This pitch swung on and backhanding is the first baseman. He'll toss to Rubash covering the bag and it's in time to get the play out. Nice job by Seth Sorley over there at first base for Wenatchee. So 3-1 on the put out officially and that'll bring up the right fielder Josh Williams. So a nice play at first by Seth Sorley defensively. And Williams now stepping into the batter's box. He's 0 for 1, grounded out to third back in the second. And the pitch by Rubash, a little bit high for ball one. One and oh the count. Rubash looking in to Roland Haynes for the sign, has what he wants. And the 1 0 pitch to the plate is across for a strike. And a count even to Williams at one ball and one strike. I'll lean across and talk to my buddies in the box next door to find out exactly who's out there at second base. Don't want to make any assumptions. That could be Brian Talavera as well for Wenatchee. In fact, I think it might be. One and two, the count to Williams here. And the pitch by Rubash is swung on a chop towards third. And on a hop, feeling it is Blakeney to throw to first. And it's in time to get him. Boy, hustling Josh Williams up the bag at first. Well, retired for the second time in this game on a ground out to the third baseman. And with two out here in the fourth, that brings up Cody Alvarado. That is a shortstop. Number 22, Cody Alvarado. with a base hit that went off of the pitcher back in the second on a line drive that just caromed off of the glove of Byers. And the first pitch to him here high and inside for ball one. One to know the count. If you didn't hear, the Mariners downing the White Sox today one nothing in Chicago. So that series now even at a game apiece. 1-0 pitch to Alvarado swung on and cued but right out the first baseman Storley. So a nice inning here for Rubash in relief. Three on a Assisted on the put out. One, two, three. The story here for Moses Lake in the fourth to the bottom of the fourth we go. Still a tight one here. Chiefs one, Panthers nothing. You're watching Wenatchee Baseball on the NCW Life Channel. Thomas, Ronan Haynes, and Colton Dial do up here in the fourth for the Wenatchee Panthers as they trail it one nothing here as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Thomas 0 for 1 of the ball game, grounded back to the pitcher, or to the first baseman that is, in the first. As Vance Alvarado has been wheeling and dealing so far, the first pitch here bounces in outside for ball one. One and 0 the count. Panthers have taken 10 of the last 11 for Moses Lake and lead the series all time, 71 to 50. Jeff Zenders coached against Moses Lake 17 times, or excuse me, against the Chiefs in 21 games with 17 wins to four losses. So that's a pretty good average there for Coach Jeff Sender. 2-0 oh, the count to leadoff man. This pitch taken for a strike and a count 2-1 and one on Dalton Thomas. Again, Ronan Haynes and Colton Dial do up also here in the fourth for the Panthers. 2-1 pitch, swung on and hit hard, but foul and out of play down the right field line. Count evens to Thomas at two balls and two strikes. Apple Blossom time is here. Kai's Fiber Youth Parade live Saturday right here on the NCW Live Channel. 2-2 pitch to Thomas, high and inside for ball three. Three and two the count. Toronto's gotten through the first three frames with very few pitches, so not a bad idea for Wenatchee to look at a few here. Swing and a miss on this pitch. And that looked a little outside. One down here in the fourth. That's the third strikeout of the ball game for Vance Alvarado, and that'll bring up catcher Ronan Haynes. Another catcher, number 25. 
Ronan's 0 for 1. He grounded out to second in the first. Steps up in the left-handed batter's box and the first pitch from the right-hander to him. Misses outside for ball one. One and 0 the count. So Wenatchee. This pitch is a little outside for ball two. Two and 0. Coming in the Panthers, 10 and 2. Moses Lake, 10 and 2. Pitch swung on and fouled out of play on the third base side. The count goes to 2 and 1 on Haynes. West Valley lurking in third place in the standings at 9 and 6. Then you've got East Bont and Ike tied at 7 and 5. Eastmont with some big games this week. Is there on the road at Sunnyside today. This pitch high for ball three, three and one the count. So the Panthers taking a little more of a view at the pitches here and not being so aggressive swinging. Here comes a three one pitch to Haynes inside for ball four. That's the first walk in the game given up by Vance Alvarado. So the Panthers get the tying run aboard with one out here in the fourth, and that'll bring up the designated here, Colton Dial. Dial is 0 for 1. We're going to get a courtesy runner out there at first base. First ball, as Gavin Woodring will run for the catcher. So Woodring at first, and Colton Dial coming to the plate. Colton's 0 for 1. He grounded out to short in the second. Well, this is like infield, a double play depth. Lead by Woodring from first, a short one. Alvarado pitching from the stretch. Pitch to the plate is a little low for a ball. 1-0 the count to Colton Dial. Left fielder Gabe Passy. Playing quite a bit away from the line here. This pitch is a fastball missing low. Went inside for ball two. And that's going to be enough for Donnie Lindgren to pop out of the dugout and make sure that Alvarado is okay. Meanwhile, Dial's going to head down to third base and have a coach a talk with Coach Jeff Zender. Our broadcast today brought to you in part by Wenatchee Valley YMCA for youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. It's the YMCA. Also by Heritage Memorial Chapel, a funeral home with a heritage owned by a trusted friend. A reminder, Hockey Night coming up on Thursday night on the NCW Life Channel will feature Prince George and Wenatchee Game 4. <laughs> the Rolling Mix Concrete Arena in Prince George, 612 miles from Wenatchee. That game at 7 o'clock on Thursday nights. Friday, it's boys soccer. Wenatchee and Davis at 7. Kai's Fiber Youth Parade live Saturday morning at 11. And then that magical game 5 between Wenatchee and Prince George at the Town Toyota Center. This pitch swung on, hit hard to right field. Josh Williams coming in, then has to drop back and scampering back to first base would ring on the line drive out to right for the second out here of the fourth and that'll bring up first baseman Seth Storley for that magical game five the game that gave Wenatchee its first championship BCHL title the Fred Page Cup that is Saturday night seven o'clock if you weren't there you need to watch it this pitch a strike taken on the outside corner 0 and one to Seth Storley again that Saturday night seven o'clock right here on the NCW Life Channel won the count to Storley with a runner at first and two down now here in the fourth and a one nothing ball game. This pitch swung on and hit foul into the screen on the first base side so the count goes to 0 and 2 quickly on Storley who's 0 for 1 in the game. Grounded out to second in the second. As the first six out of this ball game were all ground ball outs off the arm of Alvarado. Here comes the 0-2 pitch, swung on and hit hard but just foul up the first baseline. So the count stays at 0-2. Looking forward to apple blossom time. Thomas Blakeney warming up on deck if he gets a chance here with two down in the fourth. Storley ready. The 0-2 pitch to him is a check swing. Ball is in the dirt. The catcher tags the batter. They appeal out to the base umpire, Mark Colander. He says, no, he didn't go. And the count goes to a ball and two strikes on Seth Storley. As expected, a tight one here between the Chiefs and the Panthers. 
one two pitch curveball strike three called on the inside corner gone looking is Seth Storley and that's the fourth strikeout here for Vance Alvarado and we head to the fifth inning of play Chiefs still lead it one nothing you're watching one at baseball today on the NCW Life Channel we're back after this Jordan Velasquez is the new second baseman for Wenatchee. Now that we got that cleared, that Jared Rubash moved over to the mound to take over for Kyle Byers, our starting pitcher. We head to the fifth inning of play. one nothing our score. Moses Lake on top. Number nine, nine, one, and two do up here for Moses Lake in their part of the fifth. Gabe Passy leads things off. Left fielder's 0 for 1 with a strikeout in the first, and he takes the first pitch from Rubash for a strike 0 and 1 to count on Gabe Passy. Tight in that right-handed batter's box. The 0 1 pitch swung on on two hops, goes right over to Thomas Blakeney, and his throw is perfect over to first base. One down to the fifth, brings up second baseman Nick Valdez. Valdez 0 for 2 in the ball game. He grounded out to second in the first and grounded out to third in the third. One run, five hits, no errors for Moses Lake. No runs, one hit, no errors for Wenatchee. This curveball is taken for a strike by Valdez. 0-1-1 the count on the second baseman for the Chiefs. A one pitch swung on, lifted in the air to shallow left field. Who's going to get this one? The left fielder, Nolan Dory, will call everybody off. That, kids, is why you call it. A fly out to left field for the second out here of the fifth. And that brings up first baseman Dax Lindgren. And it could have been trouble. Dalton Thomas was running out that direction. He probably could have made the catch. But you always want the guy who's in better position to make the catch. And Nolan Dory was that man. First pitch misses to Dax Lindgren. He's one for two of the ball game with a double. Grounded out to first in the third. And has scored our only run of the ball game. Takes the second pitch for a strike. One and one to count on Dax. The one one delivery fastball misses just low for ball two. Appreciate those in Moses Lake watching us on our internet broadcast, ncwlife.com. This pitch swung on. That's going to be trouble for center fielder TJ Shirting. And die. oh, he makes the catch. Boy, that ball must have hung up in a little breeze blowing in from left field. The way that ball went off the bat, I thought that was going to drop down for sure, but Shirting is able to close the gap, make the catch, and it's a 1-2-3 story for Moses Lake in the fifth. To the bottom of the fifth we go. one nothing. Chiefs over the Panthers. You're watching Wenatchee Baseball today on the NCW Live Channel. We're back after this. Blakely, Chandler Holiday, and Nolan Dory do up here in the bottom of the fifth where Wenatchee trailing into one nothing. And Vance Alvarello's first pitch of the fifth swung on a well hit ball into the gap to left center. This one is going to get down for extra bases. Rounding first, heading for second is Thomas Blakely. And in with a stand up double to start things off here on the fifth is the sophomore for the Panthers. Pitch to Thomas Blakeney nailed in the gap between Gabe Passy and Evan McLean out there in the outfield. And now the Panthers with a real chance to tie this game up here in the fifth as they trail it 1-0. That brings up right fielder Chandler Holliday. See if Coach Zender plays small ball here and gets the runner down to third. Pitch to the plate. Swung on and a fly ball to left center. The center fielder going over will make the catch on the run. McLean will then fire the ball in, cut off by Cody Alvarado. And getting back to second is Thomas Blakeney. Well struck ball, but McLean able to track it down. One down here in the fifth brings up left fielder Nolan Dory. Dory, 0 for 1, struck out in the third. And the pitch by Alvarado misses high for ball one. 1 and 0 the count on Nolan Dory. Get 
think to be a busy time for the little TV station here in Wenatchee. The 1 0 pitch misses. Oh, my. I thought that missed outside, but I'm a little bit a cant of home plate here. So, strike called. Evens the count at one ball and one strike. You probably have a better vision of that than I do on that camera from center field. Here comes the 1 1 pitch from Alvarado on the way to the plate. Swung on and hit foul down the right field line and out of play. And the count goes to a ball and two strikes. Sports, Apple Blossom, parades. We've got three parades of the next week and a half here with the Kai's Fiber Youth Parade Saturday morning at 11. We've got the Les Schwab Classic Chassis Parade next Friday at 6.30. And then the Grand Parade the following Saturday. This pitch swung on and fouled back. The count stays at a ball and two strikes, so Dory stays alive. Panthers just trying to eke away at base hits here and get Blakeney home from second base at a one nothing ball game. Panthers now with two hits in the game. The one two pitch in the dirt outside. Blakeney will hold out there at second base as the count evens to Dory at two balls and two strikes. Donnie Lindgren comes from his third base coach's box and Bellers out to his infield about keeping the man close to the bag at second. The 2-2 pitch on the way by Alvarado is strike three called and gone looking. That's the third strikeout looking for the Panthers here in the game. The fifth strikeout by Alvarado. And that's a big out here in the fifth with two down brings up Jared Rubash, the pitcher. Number five, Jared Rubash. Rubash is one for one. Got the first base hit of the ball game. This pitch swung on and lifted in the air to right field. That's going to drop down for a base hit. They're going to return the runner from third. Here he comes home. The throw is high. The slide is down. He's safe. Aggressive play by Jeff Zender, sending Blakeney from third on a ball that was struck hard to the outfield by Jared Rubash. Give him the RBI as Blakeney scores, and we are tied at one. Good throw from Josh Williams, a little bit high. And Cody Goodwin not able to get the tag down on Blakeney, sliding home for the tying run. This pitch is a strike called on the outside corner to TJ Shirting. 0 and 1 the count to Shirting, who's 0 for 2 in the game, grounded out to first in the first and struck out looking in the third. One of five strikeout victims by Alvarado here in this ballgame. The 0 1 pitch instead of toss over to the bag at first, not in time. So a two out RBI single by Rubash ties this game up at one. The runner from first goes. The pitch swung on a loop down the right field line. It's going to slice just foul. And a count 0 1 2 on Shirting as Rubash will have to head back to the bag at first. Let me check and make sure that's still Rubash out there and not a courtesy runner since Rubash is now the pitcher. No, it is Jared out there. Shirting behind in the count to Alvarado, 0 and 2. Rubash will go. The, run, the pitch is high. The throw down to second base, not in time. That's just a flat stolen base. A ball to Shirting, and the Panthers have the go ahead run now in scoring position with two outs here in the fifth and a 1 2 count on TJ Shirting. Alvarado checks the runner at second. Here comes the one-two pitch to the plate. Swung on a hit back over the mound, over the center, second base bag. Rounding third, Rubash heading for home. Here comes the throw. It's cut off. The relay is in time. They got him. Beautiful play defensively on the relay from the throw from center field. And out at home is Jared Rubash. And that'll be the final out here of the inning. But the Panthers do get a run on three hits. One man left. We will head to the sixth. It's all tied at one. You're watching Panther Baseball today on the NCW Life Channel. new ball game with the Panthers.
after scoring a run in the bottom half, the fifth to the sixth we go, all tied at one now, and that'll bring up third baseman Dominic Signorelli for the Chiefs. He'll be followed by Cody Goodwin and Evan McLean. Appreciate you joining us here on the NCW Life Channel on Channel 12 on Local Tell, Channel 19 on Charter. Over the air at 47.1. Also streaming on our website at ncwlife.com where you can catch all of the prep action right here on the NCW Life channel. Eric Grantstrom with you today. We've got Jay Seebeck, our line producer here as well. And Jessica Medina up there high on top of the Apple Bowl. On a sunny afternoon here in the Wenatchee Valley. Caitlin Hedersheet back in the studios making sure all the switches and dials are in the right spot to bring you the broadcast here today. Signorelli two for two in the game with an RBI and a couple of base hits. The first pitch to him by Rubash is low for a ball. 1-0 the count to Dominic Signorelli. Third baseman for Moses Lake has certainly accounted for himself here today. The 1-0 pitch by Rubash to Signorelli is a fastball taken for a strike across the knees. And the count evens at one ball and one strike. Let's get the pitching numbers on Rubash this season for Wenatchee. The pitch swung on and hit up the third baseline but foul and the count goes to a ball and two strikes on Signorelli. Rubash on the season, no record. He does have one save. The ERA at 1.544 and 22 and two thirds innings pitched for Wenatchee. His second inning of relief here. This pitch is a cold strike three. Gone looking Signorelli for the first out here of the sixth. And that strikeout for Rubash is his 25th of the season. That's good for second best on the team behind Thomas Blakeney, who has 30 on the season. Cody Goodwin is one for one with a base hit and a walk. And the first pitch he takes for a strike and the count 0 and 1 on Cody Goodwin. Again, Paul Weddle and Mark Colander are officiants for the game today. Weddle behind home plate calling balls and strikes. The 0 1 pitch, curveball misses high. That'll get good one to bend at the waist out of the way of that one. One and one the count to the second man to the plate here in the sixth and a one one tie. The pitch to the plate swung on and hit foul down the right field line. Long run for Holiday. And that's going to get out of play down the right field line. And the count goes to a ball and two strikes. Our broadcast today brought to you in part by Confluence Health, Wenatchee's premier treatment center for all sports related injuries. That's Confluence Health. <laughs> by the Wenatchee Valley YMCA for youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. It's the Wenatchee Valley YMCA. One and two, the count to good one here. Outfield playing pretty much straight away. The pitch to the plate swung on and hit towards third. And a good play by Thomas Blakeney, the throw across in time for the outs. Very sure-handed Thomas over there at third base today for the Panthers. And with two down, that'll bring up center fielder Evan McLean. McLean steps in. He's 0 for 2 on the day. And the first pitch to him, he fouls over towards the dugout on the third base side. The count 0 and 1 on McLean. <laughs> Having grounded into an inning ending double play to the shortstop in the first and popped up to the first baseman in the third. The 0 1 pitch to him here is a strike on the outside corner. 0 and 2 the count. Jared Rubash doing a nice job of picking up for Kyle Byers here in relief. Actually, this is uh, Jared's third inning early for Wenatchee. The pitch swung on a hit towards the second baseman. Over to his right is Velasquez, and he'll throw in time for the out. So a one, two, three story for Moses Lake here in the sixth. And how about Rubash in relief? He's retired all nine batters he's faced. We will head to the bottom of the sixth. We are tied at one. It's Wenatchee. It's Moses Lake. It's the Chiefs. It's the Panthers on the NCW Life Channel. We're back after this. Lake 
scored its run in the first on three hits back to back to back. That changed in the fifth when Wenatchee got a leadoff double from Thomas Blakeney. He was brought home by the two out single by Jared Rubash. And it's a 1 1 game as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Dalton Thomas leads things off, takes the first pitch after scoring to bunt for a strike. 0 oh, 1 the count on Dalton Thomas, who's 0 for 2 in the ball game. Grounded out to first in the first and struck out in the fourth. And this pitch he takes for a ball. One and one to count. This pitch swung on a foul down the right field line and out of play. It goes to a ball and two strikes now on Dalton Thomas, leadoff man here for the Wenatchee Panthers in their part of the sixth inning. Ronan Haynes, Colton Dial also do up here. This pitch is in the dirt for a ball. Evens the count at two balls and two strikes. The pitch, strike three, called on the outside corner. So another strikeout looking. That's the sixth strikeout of the ball game for Vance Alvarado. First out of the sixth. And that'll bring up the catcher, Ronan Haynes. Number 25, Ronan Haynes. Well, former Wenatchee Apple Sox pitcher, Marco Gonzalez, got the win today for the Mariners in their 1-0 victory over Chicago. So congratulations to Marco Gonzalez. Haynes is 0 for 1. This pitch is going to be served on the ground past the diving second baseman, Zach Valdez, and into right field for a base hit. So the Panthers get a runner aboard with one down on the first hit by Haynes in the ball game. That's the fifth hit of the game for Wenatchee, and that brings up the DH, Colton Dial. Possibly. Oh, we're going to get a courtesy runner over at the back at first. And it will be, again, Gavin Woodring over there running. Nice job, Ronan. So one on and one down for Wenatchee. Gavin Woodring at the game is the courtesy run at the bat as a designated hitter. Number 11, Colton Dow. Kyle Seeger with a double today. He went two for four for the Mariners. Haniger with a two-out RBI. This pitch swung on down the right field line. It goes past the right fielder all the way to the fence. Rounding second, Woodring heading in for third. Here comes the throw from the outfield. It got away from the first baseman, but then backed up by the pitcher. Or actually, the first baseman will back up the second baseman as the ball went over his head. And how about that for Colton Dial, a double. Now runners at second and third for Wenatchee. And that'll be first baseman Seth Storley coming to the plate. He's 0 for 2 in the game. Infield will come in to try to preserve this 1-1 contest. One out, two on, in scoring position for the Panthers. The first pitch swung on and fouled back into the screen on the first base side of the count 0-1 to Seth Storley. Grounded out to second in the second. Struck out looking for the final out in the fourth. Now another courtesy runner will come out and run for Colton Dial at second base. And that is 19, Colton Files. That'll come out there and run. So Files is at second now. Woodring at third for the Panthers. And 0-1 and the count to Seth Storley. Marco Gonzalez with a win today. No runs, five hits in six innings. Struck out eight for the Mariners. This pitch swung on and fouled down the right field line and out of play. And the count 0-2 on Storley. Dan Altavila, Mark Ripchinski, Nicasio all relieving Diaz with his ninth save of the season for the Mariners pitching the ninth. Struck out two. Perfect ninth for Diaz. The pitch here high and outside. Almost got past the catcher. Good one. The count goes to a ball and two strikes on Seth Storley. Looking down towards the batting cages behind the dugouts on the Moses Lake side. Nobody warming up here. And one and two to count. The pitch bounces in. 
Goodwin did a nice job of blocking that, and the no, 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 no. appeal down to second base, no swing on that pitch, and the count evens now to Storley at two balls and two strikes. So a sticky situation here for Vance Alvarado for the Moses Lake Chiefs. He's allowed one run, but got two big ducks on the pond here at second and third for Wenatchee and a 2-2 count to Seth Storley with first base open. One out in the inning. The pitch to the plate way outside for ball three. So Storley was behind in the count 0-2 and now has worked it full at three and two. Thomas Blakeney waiting on deck, who doubled in his last plate appearance. Wadanchi trying to get the edge in the big nine standings. Both teams tied at 10 and two. Here comes the pitch to the plate, swung on a chop back towards the left side of the mound. Off the mound is Alvarado, he'll throw home. The tag got away from the catcher and safe at home is Woodring and the Panthers take a 2-1 lead. throw home, but as the tag was applied, the ball got away from the catcher, and so safe at home on the play is Woodring. Down to third goes Files. Over at first on a fielder's choice is Storley. Give Storley the RBI. Now that'll bring out third baseman Thomas Blakeney. So the Panthers have erased a 1-0 lead in the last two frames and now lead it 2-1, to one, and Dolly Lindgren wants to come out and talk about it with his pitcher. So the Mariners will win today, 1-0 over Chicago, and Marco, uh, Marco Gonzalez, former Gonzaga Bulldog and Wenatchee Apple Sox pitcher, getting the victory on the mound today. I think that improved his record to 2-2 two and two on the season, so that's good to hear and good to see from Marco Gonzalez. Mariners climb back, what, a couple games over 500 now, trying to keep pace in the American League West. So after the conversation on the mound, the infield will drop back in double play depth and try to turn two here. Blakeney with a double, and he scored Wenatchee's first run on a ground ball by Rubash. Steps in here with runners on the corners. The pitch is a bunt attempt up the first baseline, and it's going to trickle foul. Good idea for the Panthers here. Blakeney a little bit off the mark on the bunt up the first baseline. So the count 0 and 1 on Blakeney. Runners on the corners, files down at third. Storley on at first with one down. The pitch to the plate is bouncing in. Nice stop again by Goodwin. And the count evens to Blakeney at one ball and one strike. Broadcast today on the NCW Life Channel brought to you in part by Heritage Memorial Chapel, a funeral home with a heritage owned by a trusted friend. One on one to count to Blakeney. The pitch to the plate, bunt attempt, fouled off. And the count goes to a ball and two strikes. Just want to say to Jeffrey Wilson and the staff at Heritage Memorial Chapel. Uh, thank you so much for your care and compassion. Uh, my former mother-in-law, Jeanette Griggs, passing away here last week in the funeral on Friday. Uh, thank you for doing such a wonderful job, as always. Gracie's grandma passed away at 72. Here comes the one-two pitch on the way to the plate to Blakeney. It swung on and hit hard. It's going to get out to center field for a base hit. It's going to score a run. Panthers up three to one. Miles scores easily on the play. Give Blakeney an RBI on the sharp hit to center. Storley winds up down at second base. And that'll bring up Chandler Holiday. So back-to-back -back runs here for Wenatchee. Now they lead it 3-1 to one over the Chiefs. Trying to add some more here with two on and one down. The pitch on the way to Holiday is a strike on the inside corner. 0-1 oh, to count to Chandler, who's 0-2. Flew out to right in the third and flew out to center in the fifth. 
switch to the plate is bouncing in. Another good stop by Cody Goodwin. And the count even to Holiday at one ball and one strike. So it looks like it's up to Alvarado here. Nobody warming up behind him unless they went to a defensive player, which they could, I suppose. A 1-1 pitch is swung on as the runners were going, and it's fouled back, and the count goes to a ball and two strikes. So baseball tonight, hockey on Thursday nights with Prince George and Wenatchee game four in the Fred Page Cup Series. And then Friday night, it's Wenatchee and Davis boys soccer at 7 o'clock. Sebastian Moraga, Matt Wisen with your play-by-play -play Friday night here on the NCW Live Channel. Channel. The one-two pitch to Holiday, high and very much inside. In fact, it went behind him, and the count now runs to two balls and two strikes on Chandler Holiday. Holiday just stayed right where he was, and that ball somehow passed behind him, didn't hit him. The 2-2 two -two pitch swung on on a fly ball to left field. Should be an easy play for Gabe Passy. Looking up into our Azure Blue Skies, makes the catch for the out. And with two outs, that'll bring up the left fielder, Nolan Dory. Oh, we're going to have a pinch hitter here for Wenatchee. Or actually... It is Shane Huffaker who will bat. Number two, Shane Huffaker. So Huffaker will bat for Nolan Dory in the lineup here for the Panthers. With two outs and two on and two in here in the sixth inning, when actually leading it three to one. And the first pitch to Huffaker is high and outside for ball one, one and oh the count. Seven hits of the ball game now for Wenatchee. Three runs, seven hits, no errors. The 1-0 pitch is a strike on the outside corner. One and one to count. That uh, run scoring earlier in the inning, by the way, with Woodring coming home, they're going to say that's an error on the catcher on that play at home after he dropped the ball. It was right to him. That's a good call. A pitch here misses outside for a ball. Two and one to count on Huffaker. Shane Huffker batting 200 on the season, looking for a two-out hit here. The 2-1 pitch on the way to him misses outside for ball three, three and one. Good eye by Huffaker for the Panthers. Shane Huffaker, a junior for the Panthers in the right-handed batter's box. Where's number two on his back? And here comes the 3-1 pitch on the way by Alvarado, ball four. So that loads the bases for Wenatchee. Down to third goes Storley. Second is Blakeney. At first base, Shane Huffaker and Jared Rubash, who's had a good day at the plate to help his own cause here in relief. Two for two in the ball game with an RBI. Chance to give the Panthers a little more breathing room heading into the seventh. So they lead it by two right now. The pitch to the plate is a bunt attempt up the third baseline, but it goes foul. And a count 0-1 on, on Jared Rubash. Two teams will meet at Larson Playfield on Friday in a doubleheader. First game starts at 4 o'clock. Then it's going to be very interesting on Friday after a tight one here today. 0-1 pitch by Alvarado to Rubash is in the dirt outside. Another good stop by Cody Goodwin. Well, he's made his earnings here in this frame, even though he's tacked for the air. Has made plenty of stops behind the plate. Here comes the 1-1 pitch on the way to Rubash. Strike called. And the count goes to a ball and two strikes. <laughs> Appreciate you joining us on the NCW Life Channel. Big Nine Baseball today, battle for first place. The one-two pitch to Rubash from Alvarado misses high for ball two, evens the count at two and two. So two runs in, two outs, two-two the count with the bases jammed with Panthers here. Alvarado ready, and the right-hander's delivery to the plate is a curveball 
strike three called and another strikeout looking for the Panthers here in this game and for Alvarado that's his seventh strikeout and I think five of those seven have been by looking how about that we'll take a break and come back we're heading to the seventh and we'll see who the Panthers bring out here defensively as we come back as they now lead it 3-1 you're watching Panther baseball on the NCW Life Channel we're back after this So Shane Huffaker will stay out in and play for Nolan Dory in left field here defensively for the Panthers. Jared Rubash will continue to pitch here as he stands to win this one for Wadanchi as he took over in the fourth. As we head to the seventh, Panthers lead it by two, but the Chiefs always have plenty of ammunition in the chamber. Austin Valdez will start things off here in the seventh. First pitch by Rubash to him is a fastball low for ball one. Want to know the count to Austin who's 0 for 2 in the ball game with a strikeout in the second and he grounded back to first in the fourth. The 1-0 pitch by Rubash and missing outside for ball two. 3-1 our game. One run in the first for Moses Lake. When Anchi came back to tie it with a run in the bottom of the fifth. And just took the lead with two runs in the sixth. And just like that, it goes 3-0 on Austin Valdez. Not what you want if your coach Jeff Zender here is to get the leadoff man aboard and bring the tying run to the plate here in the seventh. The 3-0 pitch to the plate is down the middle for a strike, and the count goes to 3-1. and one. On Austin Valdez, who'll be followed by, well, scheduled anyway, Josh Williams and Cody Alvarado, but I do see a man wearing a different number in the on-deck circle. This pitch low for ball four, so the leadoff man gets aboard. Just what Donnie Lindgren wants to see if you're Moses Lake here, and Jeff Sender's going to go out to the mound and talk to his pitcher. He's got his ace, Blakeney, over at third base. We'll see if he brings him in or not. And he will. So a new pitcher coming in as Thomas Blakeney will just switch positions with Jared Rubash out on the mound or out on the field defensively here. So with a pitching change made, we'll take another break here on the NCW Life Channel. One on, no outs. It's a 3-1 ball game, but hold on. We're in the top of the seventh. We'll come back right after this on the NCW Life Channel. Nobody out here in the seventh and a new pitcher taking over third of the day for the Wenatchee Panthers as Thomas Blakeney will move over from third base to take over on the mound here and try to get the Chiefs final three outs. Meanwhile, Jared Rubash will go over to third base and take up the defensive position there. Meanwhile, we have a pinch hitter coming to the plate for Moses Lake as Cameron Huberdeau will bat for Josh Williams. Also, a runner will come out to run at first base, and that's Ezekiel Ochoa. So Ochoa will run for Valdez at first after he got aboard on a leadoff walk off of Jared Rubash. So Rubash goes three plus after Kyle Byers went three innings. And it's a 3-1 ball game. Hold on. Blakeney's first pitch taken for a strike in the count. Oh, and one on Cameron Huberdeau. Huberdeau, a senior for the Moses Lake Chiefs. We talked about Blakeney leading the team with 30 strikeouts on the season. And Coach Jeff Zender would love him to come in here and get a K. This pitch misses high for a ball. One and one to count on Huberto with Cody Alvarado waiting on deck. 3-1 with Anchi on top with a runner aboard. The pitch to the plate swung on, lifted in the air, right down the right field line, and over roaming is Chad Holiday. And he'll catch it in foul territory. Excuse me, Chandler Holiday. <laughs> Forty and slip there. First outs here in the seventh, and that'll bring up the shortstop Cody Alvarado. Alvarado. 
Toronto's one for two in the bowl game. Got a base hit back in the second and grounded out to first in the fourth. One out, one big out here in the seventh inning. The pitch to the plate is a fastball missing just inside for ball one. One and oh the count on Cody Alvarado. Thomas Blakeney with a record of three and one. Does not have a save on the season, but 30 strikeouts to lead the team. The 1-0 pitch to the plate is a strike. Went a little off speed there, and the count evens now to Alvarado at one ball and one strike. Gabe Passy is the man scheduled on deck, but I do see a different uh, man on the in the warm-up circle, Emmett Tatum, warming up right now for Moses Lake. This pitch swung on and grounded towards third. Double play chance to second for one. The relay to first is not in time. But they did get the lead man at second. So Alvarado aboard on the fielder's choice, 5-4 on the put out. Ochoa, the second out, out there at second base. And we will have a pinch hitter here as Emmett Tatum will bat. Tatum is a junior, listed as a second baseman. Will stand up here and be Moses Lake's last chance with two down, trailing by two here in the top of the seventh. The pitch is in the dirt. Oh, the strike called. The throw down to first got off of Storley's glove, but right there backing up is Velasquez. The count 0-1 to Emmett Tatum. Second pinch hitter here in the seventh for Donnie Lindgren and the Chiefs. Working from the stretch is Thomas Blakeney trying to get it done here. The pitch swung on, hit down the third baseline. That's going to be a base hit in the left field. The runner at second will hold as the ball comes in from Huffaker out there. So a two-out base hit laced down the left field line, puts runners at first and second base. So the tying run is aboard, and the go-ahead run would come to the plate in second baseman Nick Valdez. Well, Valdez is 0 for 3 in the game. He grounded out twice, once to second, once to third, and flew out to left in his last plate appearance in the fifth. Two on, two outs, two run lead for Wenatchee. And this curveball misses way high for ball one to Valdez. Listed here as Zick as Nick, but it's Zach Valdez, the second baseman for Moses Lake in a right-handed batter's box. And the 1-0 pitch from Blakeney on the way to the plate is outside in the dirt. Nice stop by Ronan Haynes. And the count goes to 2-0. Oh. Alvarado with speed out at second base. Emmett Tatum at first base with a two-out base hit. And now a 2-0 count to Zach Valdez. Wind blowing in slightly from center field. And the 2-0 pitch is right down the middle, but low for ball three. Becoming interestinger and interestinger here in the top of the seventh inning. Leadoff man got aboard on a walk, but then he was erased on a fielder's choice. This pitch is taken for a strike, and the count goes to three and one. Cameron Huberto flew out to right field for the first out. Cody Alvarado hit into a fielder's choice. That got Ochoa out at second. Alvarado now down at second. Tatum at first, and a 3-1 count to Zach Valdez. The pitch misses outside, and that loads the bases with Chiefs. Bringing up first baseman Dax Lindgren. Alvarado to third base. Tatum to second base. Zach Valdez aboard at first and no place to put Dax Lindgren. Lindgren with a double and he scored Moses Lake's only run back of the first. He grounded out to first in the third and flew out to center in the fifth. Lindgren in the left-handed batter's box against the right-hander on the mound, Thomas Blakeney. Blakeney with a long look in, still working from the stretch. And the right-hander's delivery is outside for ball one with a fastball.
trying to hold on to the lead here and get the victory and move into first place all by themselves. This pitch swung on a hit hard, but foul at the first baseline. And it count even to Lindgren at one ball and one strike, and he was just ahead of that off-speed pitch. The tension palatable here. The 1-1 one, one. pitched by Blakeney as a curveball swung on, lifted in the air towards center field over his TJ shirting. He will make the catch, and that will do it, and the Panthers will hold on by the hair of their chinny chin chin and down Moses Lake by a final of three to one. We will take a two minute break and come back and wrap it up here from Recreation Park after the Panthers hold on for the 3-1 victory. We're back after this timeout on the NCW Live channel. Once again to Recreation Park here today. The Wenatchee Panthers knock off the Moses Lake Chiefs by a final of three to one. One run, six hits, one error for Moses Lake. Three runs, seven hits, and no errors for Wenatchee in this one. Kyle Byers worked the first three innings for the Panthers. He gets a no decision here today. Gave up one run on four hits. Struck out one and one. Okay, sorry about that. Lost power there for a second. We're back now. <laughs> As uh, we'll uh, continue with the line score here, Jared Rubash for the Panthers gets the victory. He goes three plus innings, no runs, four hits, struck out one, walked one. Thomas Blakeney worked the ninth and got the save. He did give up a hit, but no runs. He did not strike out a batter, and he walked one here today, and that's the line for the Panthers. The loss will be handed to Vance Alvarado. He went all six, allowed three runs on seven hits. Two of those were earned seven strikeouts and two walks here today. I think five of the strikeouts were looking for the uh, Panthers here offensively. Meanwhile, with Anchi offensively on the day today, Colton Dial goes one for two with a big uh, double in the sixth. He scored a run. Also, Thomas Blakeney went two for three with an RBI and a run scored. And Jared Rubash goes two for three, helping his own cause with an RBI as well. So there you go. The uh, Panthers get the win today, again, by a final of three to one and move into first place, at least for the moment, in the Big Nine. All alone as they'll face Moses Lake again in two games on Friday at Larson Field. That will begin at four o'clock. Thanks to our crew today for helping us out on the broadcast to our line producer Jay Seebeck, to our camera person extraordinaire Jessica Medina and of course to our studio coordinator Caitlin Hedersheet. I'm Eric Grandstrom. That's going to wrap it up and we appreciate you joining us for Panther Baseball today as again Wenatchee downs Moses Lake by a score of 3-1. to one. Have a good night everybody. This concludes our broadcast of High School Baseball on the NCW Live channel. Tonight's broadcast was brought to you by the Wenatchee Valley YMCA. We now return to regular programming already in progress on your source for sports for North Central Washington, the NCW Life Channel.